hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. Can we stop the music? Sorry, can't uh, talk and bounce at the same time. Now, as you may recall, a year ago my car broke, and to pay for it, I sold some requests. And accidentally, I sold way too many. It's taken a while to get through them all, but finally, a full 12 months later, I am finally finishing them. At last, I'm done. Just in time for my car to break again. Next time, y'all are gonna buy me a new car, and I'll just do nothing but requests for the rest of my life. But as we finally put an end to this stretch of videos, there is only one song for which we can pack it up and pack it in. I can't make it down, I can't make it down. So get down to seat and jump around. Jump up, jump up, and get down. Yes, Jump Around, the deathless jock jam that ruled the airwaves in 1992 and still gets the party jumping almost 30 years later by DJ Lethal, Danny Boy, and Eric Everlast Schrode, collectively known as the House of Pain. This is one of the most requested songs I get. And in fact, I was saving this request for last specifically because this song's requester had been a patron for the shortest amount of time. But there was another reason why I saved it for last, and why I have never, ever reviewed it before today. And that is that I love it way too much. So get out your seat and jump around! This song is a part of me, and it has been for longer than I can even remember. Reviewing it is like reviewing my own hands. If you took a microscope to my DNA, it would read, Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. I came to win, but I don't need that sin. I won't have a psycho punk, you better back up. Try and play the role, and you're the whole cool act. Get up, stand up, come with all your hands, and forget the feeling. Jump up, touch the ceiling, muzzle, a funk flow. Someone's talking junk, yo, bust in the eye. Then I take the punk, so feeling. Fucking amps in the junk, and I got more rhymes. This cop of the Dunkin' Donut shop, shouldn't have got props from the kids on the hill. This is my mom, my pops. <sighs> and as one hit wonders go, House of Pain has a strange legacy. No one expects jock jam acts like them to have long careers. They felt like a novelty, and no one knows a single other song by them. And yet, they had legitimacy that other one-hit wonder rap acts just don't have. Partly because Jump Around is such an eternal jam, and partly because a few years later, Everlast started a successful solo career as a bluesy folk singer of all goddamn things. But mostly they remember for keeping white rap alive, during what turned out to be a very dark time for Caucasian hip-hop. Every white rapper that came after House of Pain owes them a huge debt of gratitude just for not being this. Ugh. So, let's bust that shit. We came to get down. We came to get down. So get out your seat and jump around. So, speaking of white rappers, I was reading a recent interview with the House of Pain guys and Vanilla Ice came up. And Everlast was like, yeah, it sucked to have his career because, quote, there's a big part of me that could have easily been that dude. Had that first Warner Brothers record with I Got the Knack as the first single blown up, I would have been that guy. What's this now? Nice suit, Mr. Schrody. You were correct, Everlast. It is good that this did not take off. Okay, so, backstory. Everlast was originally part of a posse called Rhyme Syndicate. My name is MC Ice-T. Everlast in the house, come on, what you wanna do? That was Ice-T's group. It was this whole young money type stable of future superstars. I'm also down with Divine, Bilal, and Quincy D. Terry B, DJ Lethal, and my brother Cool Nick. Big Jazz, Scratch, Bango, and Cutmaster Quick. No, I've never heard of any of these people either. Look, 1990 was a weird year for hip hop. Even Ice T, the original, original gangsta, was doing inane pop rap like the Dick Tracy theme and helping doofus shit like this into the world. Everlast's earlier tracks are way better, but for his big solo debut, I guess he dumbed himself down to get that Vanilla Ice money, not knowing this style would be lamer than lame by next year. And even for pop rap, this is real bad. Get it? It's called I Got the Knack, because it samples My Sharona by the Knack. Oh uh, yeah, it's just the worst. His rhymes are all preschool basic, and My Sharona was already the sample from Run DMC's It's Tricky. It's tricky, 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 tricky. It's been done. I mean, come on, it's 1990. There have only been like five samples so far. Look harder. I'm Everlast, born to be a Caucasian, but it makes no difference what persuasion. Oh my god, it gets worse. Ugh. 
Fortunately for him, no one ever saw this, or he would have never been taken seriously again. But being in Rhyme Syndicate wasn't terrible for Everlast. That was where he met a teenage beatboxer named DJ Lethal. And from there, he recruited a high school friend called Danny Boy. And they gave themselves an awesome name. The house of pain is an effect, y'all. I say the house of pain is an effect. Okay, so now that we've made it here, we have to ask the question. Is Jump Around the best song of the 90s? It's a theory we have to take seriously. Because what else is there? Smells like Teen Spirit? It's fine. California Love? I mean, it's good. Stand Out from a Goofy Movie? Look, these are all classic songs. They're just not Jump Around. Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. Like I said, I couldn't even begin to analyze why the song is so great. It's just classic line after classic line. Especially, of course, the immortal. I'll serve your ass like your Mac and Ralph. Oh! What else is there to say, really? I mean, you don't need me to explain the greatness of Jump Around. You're already familiar with it if you've gone to literally any St. Patrick's Day party or sporting event in the last 25 years. <laughs> I went to a Yankees game just this weekend and they played it. And what's amazing is that it took off right around the time that white people rapping was pretty close to being discredited. The Beastie Boys were always considered more rock than hip hop. Vanilla Ice and Marky Mark were already jokes after just a year or two. And from then on, trying to rap while being white just had this horrible stigma attached to it. Even after Eminem, white rap was treated as a novelty for years and years until roughly now when they're so ubiquitous it's not a thing anymore. So really, Jump Around was like the last good white rap song for a very long time. And it's very, very white. And not in a bad way, not in the failing to be black kind of way. It was their own thing. Now take the Beasties. They adopted this persona of, you know, Bowery Boy, New York, wise guys. And it worked for them because it was pretty close to who they really were. House of Pain did something similar by leaning on their Irish-American heritage. You, know, you see the pub, the bagpipes, the Celtics jerseys. I honestly assumed they were from Boston for the longest time. They're, they're actually from L.A. And it works, because, well, you know, Irishness has a weird place in American culture. Like, it's understood to be, like, tough. Even though it's been so watered down by this point that, like, everyone's part Irish. I'm part Irish. And trust me, you would not know it to look at me. Plus, I'm a total wuss. But there was a time in history that the Irish were the filthy, poor immigrants of the country. And they suffered through oppression in America and in their homeland that gives Irishness a certain level of street cred. In fact, just a year earlier, there was this movie, The Commitments, about a bunch of Irish street kids trying to be soul singers. Well, like, maybe we're a little white for that kind of thing. Do you not get it, lads? The Irish are the blacks of Europe. I don't know how true that is, but you know, there's, you get it, there's a, there's a level of respect. And House of Pain found an image everyone can get behind. The mook, bar-dwelling tough guys. Like this guy, this guy is a poser. But this guy's the real deal. Yeah, I know, this is an act too. And it's especially obvious if you've seen his career progression. It's just an act that worked. Get up, stand up, come on, throw your hands up. And you gotta give credit to that beat too. Every St. Paddy's Day, that scream comes on. And that's the cue for a bunch of drunk people to start jumping up and down. That bounce was made by Cypress Hill's DJ Muggs. And it is the greatest beat ever made. There's no one who can't move to this. You know, white people can't dance? Well, don't worry, you don't have to. You just have to jump, jump, jump. A movie came out that year called White Man Can't Jump. Well, turns out they can. The drunker you are, the better. I'm the cream of the crop, I rise to the top. And fun fact, you can literally only listen to this song with a beer. Not whiskey, not tequila, certainly no fruity cocktails, just beer. Fact, uh, the beer just appeared in my hand right now. Don't know where this came from. And this came out right during the glory years of a subgenre of rap music that kind of crossed over with the alternative kids and the metalheads. These are groups like Cypress Hill and Public Enemy and the Beasties, obviously, because it was so aggro and hard. 
In fact, Jump Around was the start of a lot of forceful, automatopoeic rap songs in that time. You know, just a lot of them. It wasn't even the only Jump song in 1992. That was also the year of Criss Cross. And Jump Around even takes a hit at Criss Cross. I, I didn't even know this. Joe Nicolo was a music executive they sent their Jump Around demo to, and he passed on it, and then a short time later he makes Jump with Criss Cross. I guess House of Pain thought their song got stolen. But fortunately, it turned out that there was more than enough Jump to go around that year. It was the best year for jumping since 1984. And also, I think there was this like brief period in 2000 where you could have heard jumpin' jumpin' back to back with Jumper. I wish you would step back from that. that song's not as great for jumping though. Try to play me up like this if my name was Sega. I, I feel like I'm talking in circles. I just love this song way too much. It speaks to me like nothing else ever will. It's just stood the test of time. But no group of Irishmen, no matter how rowdy, can jump forever. What next? Three words, folks. House of pain. Okay? Three more words. St. Patrick's Day. Okay? Guy's got his own day. Guy's got his own parade. You oh, wow. Dennis Leary, huh? We're really going there. Real Irish guys wear Celtics jerseys with a big 3-3 in the front. I think you hear me knocking folks. Oh, are you Irish, Dennis? I had no idea. Don't talk to me about you two. Those guys aren't Irish. Those guys wear berets. They're French. Real That's Irish funny, because I remember Bono having some harsh words for Americans acting like they know anything about being Irish. I've had enough of Irish Americans who haven't been back to their country. Well, anyway, this is House of Pain's second song. This one is called, not joking, Shamrocks and Shenanigans. Ooh, shamrocks and shenanigans. On the draw, like the horse named McGraw from the cartoon. Boom, shalak, lock, boom. Boom, shalak, lock, boom. All right, now. Boom. Yeah, it's clearly trying to be Jump Around Part 2. Boom, shalak, lock, boom. Everybody. Boom. Yeah, you know, as hooks go, it's no jump, jump, but boom, shalak, lock, boom. You know, those are good, loud noises. Because I feel blessed. I'm casually dressed. Oh, it seems like it's doing all the right things. Danny Boy gets something to do in this one. It ain't no thing. My car don't ring. He has lamented that he didn't write any part of Jump Around, so he gets none of those fat, fat royalty checks. I don't know. It doesn't have that bounce. And without it, it feels like it's missing something. Or I don't know, maybe I might be able to take this more seriously, but it wasn't called Shamrocks and Shenanigans. Yellow moons, green clovers. They're starting to come off a little cartoony. With the Shamrocks and Dennis Leary and one of them literally being named Danny Boy but it's much worse on the rest of the album, which for the record is hilarious. The four-man crew with the Irish crew. Being Irish is the only thing they rap about. I'm Irish, but I'm not a leprechaun. You want to fight, then step up and we'll get it on. You this is from a song literally titled Top of the Morning to Ya. Top of the Morning to Ya. You may remember it from Daredevil, where it introduced Colin Farrell's Irish supervillain to the movie. Woof. And there's so much more of it from there. The Irish is in the house. They have one topic. I am Irish and badass. In fact, it mostly reminded me of Rico Suave, who also only had one topic. And the high point comes when House of Pain do, in fact, sing Danny Boy. Oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes, they're calling. After that, they were on the Judgment Night soundtrack doing a rock song with Helmet. Kinda sucks. And they also got to do the theme song to Who's the Man, which was a movie starring the hosts of Yo! MTV Rats. And yeah, after that, House of Pain just drifted from people's attention. They released their second album in 94, and they decided to go even harder. I got still kid, then I'm on the milk it. At some point, Everlast's voice dropped into a really low register, and over time, he sounded more and more like Christian Bale Batman. Calvin Klein's no friend of mine, so I don't like Marky or the Monarch. Taking aim at Marky Mark. Yeah, brave stance in 94. Don't stand so close to me, cut. Now, that second album does have its fans. Legendary critic Robert Criscow said it was the hardest album of the year, so take that. Biggie and Nas. Chuck Eddy also reviewed it in Spin, and his take was more, you know, it's fine, but I don't think anyone's gonna care. And that turned out to be mostly correct. 
Shouty aggro rap went out of style as quick as pop rap did, and the lingering memory of Vanilla Ice grew too large for any Caucasian rapper to overcome. Get up, I'll break it down a little something. And there was one more album in 96, which was even darker and tougher, and it's not great. The thing that they had in the beginning that they lost over time was that Jump Around was fun. Those second and third albums aren't fun. And eventually all three guys admitted to each other that they weren't having fun in real life either, so they called it quits. After that, Everlast started his solo career and he took it in a more, you know, soulful and serious direction. And he had a monster hit in 1998 with What It's Like. Which is about, you know, judgy pricks who don't understand people's struggles. I have heard this song some 5 billion times over the course of my life, and I have yet to form an opinion on it. A true 5 out of 10. I mean, it was pretty daring to get a pro-choice song on the air, but it's also kind of preachy. I don't know, I can sing it from memory. Everlast never had a hit on that level again, so arguably he's a double one-hit wonder, if you don't count that Santana song he was on. But he's kept putting out albums to this day, and I don't think there's anyone else out there doing hip-hop inflected blues folk, so I'm, I'm glad he has his following. And Danny Boy has had various side projects and businesses since then, and right after the breakup, DJ Lethal joined a little upstart band you might have heard of called Limp Biscuit. Oh, Limp Biscuit. Every time I think you weren't that bad, I remember shit like this. I want to bring out my man Everlast! House of Pain turned out to be really influential for the record, especially on new metal. You know, Jump Around was in Mrs. Doubtfire of all things, and they say that right after that movie, a bunch of really young people started showing up at their concerts. Did every one of those kids start new metal bands? I wouldn't discount it. What a proud legacy. I mean, I still really love Jump Around, but if you wanted to make a case against House of Pain, that would be a good place to start. And since then, House of Pain have done some small reunion shows, but Everlast has said that'll be pretty much it. Man, sometimes when you do it that perfectly the first time, there's no point in continuing. Jump up, jump up and get down. There's nowhere to go but down from Jump Around. It was the cream of the crop. It rose to the top. It's no wonder they couldn't follow it up, and Everlast had to rebuild his career doing something entirely different. No, it's simply the best song ever made. Made Jump Around Live Forever. Jump, 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 jump. I'm the cream of the crop, I rise to the top, I never even pick cause the pick is a cop, but better yet, terminate it, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, tried to play me out like his different name is Sega, but I ain't going out like no punk bitch, you just one style yo, and I might switch it up, up and around, but I put down, put your head and wake up in the dawn of the dead, I'm coming to get you, coming to get you, spitting out lyrics, homie, I'll watch you, can't get down, I can't get down, get out, so you can jump around.